Okay, so we're back, and this time I want to continue on our time value of money discussion to to kind of illustrate this concept. All right, so we talked about last time the you know the difference on how bet bet between I guess just taking face value cash flows like you see here uh, for over 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 ten years. I guess let me let me hide this for the moment. Uh, for so looking at you know 10, 10 years of cash flows, we, we're investing two hundred dollars a day. We're getting twenty five dollars in cash flow every year for ten years, and we're we're asking ourselves, will we make money on that, right? And the short answer is no, right? We won't. So let's let's change that to to there. So we can see that we're we're actually going to lose money. Um, now we did this a pretty painful calculation process. You can see we went through and we calculated the present value of every period. There is a shortcut on how you can do that. And let me just let me write it as NPV Excel. Now Excel gives you an, a formula that you can use. You can either start typing it in if you know it or you can go to insert uh, no, 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 formulas. Sorry, I never use this. Uh, so go to formulas, then you click on financial, and then you could go down through here and look at all the different financial formulas that you can uh, use. And the one we would be using is uh, net present value there, MPV. Um, so what I do is I type in MPV, and you see it starts telling me, asking me what values I want to put in. So the rate is 10%. And then what I would do in Excel for MPV is I would highlight all of these positive cash flows, right, for the 10 periods that I have. Notice that I did not uh, highlight the, the outflow yet. And then I'm going to add the, um, I guess, the, the outflow uh, toward the end. Let me change that to a regular sign, right, so similar. And you see it's the same thing, right? And, and that's a lot faster and you probably will like that but what's really important to notice is how we added that on on the end look here in the formula how we added that back and we didn't just go through and say okay let's take this all as as our values right because then what it's doing is it's saying well what is the present value of an uneven series of cash flows uneven in the sense that this is even 25 across the board this is uneven it's a positive and negative so the the trick is that with excel you have to uh, do your your cash flows inside the formula then you have to add your your investment at the end okay then you probably were asking yourselves, well, uh, what would be a a, a uh, what is this what does this mean to us? You know, why is this you know a bad thing? Well, in general, you you have uh, the this rule, right? That the the net present value rule is um, is that when MPV is greater than zero, then you invest in the project and the project. When less than or equal to zero, you don't. Very simple, right? And what that means is that based on your required return and these cash flows, you will not make the amount of money that you uh, desire to in your firm. Now you have another one that's called the IRR. This is the internal rate of return. And its definition, uh, definition is the the it 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 is the um, the cost of capital. So R is what what does R have to be? The cost of capital for a series of cash flows to equal um, to to have a net present value of zero. That's what it's saying. So and for what what would it take for us to get to the threshold, right? So that means that if we were to take this this cash this series here, right, what what would this number have to be for this to hit zero? So in other words, for us to hit that threshold between investment and no investment. And so the internal rate of return and we're going to discuss these two in depth in a future video and talk about the pros and cons of each uh, and especially the dangers of this one but I'm just going to show you really simple for right now 
we again we can go up and do the formula insert but right here we're just going to do a very simple um, we highlight the uncalculated so these are the present value I've already done calculations just take the face value numbers and you're just going to highlight them right just like this and that's it and let's put that in a percent format Hold on a second. equals internal rate of return and let's do it this way is four percent so if we were to change this number to four percent then that should wind up being uh, zero let's test it and see it gets close right it gets really close so let's now pause for a second and, and the reason why why that's that's close and you're probably saying well does that that doesn't make the definition right well the reason is because we we have some rounding here right so it's actually 4.38 so if we were just to say you know cost of capital equals internal rate of return then you see here it's going to wind up being zero okay so so let's move on uh, from that let's put this back at 10 percent and let's see what our, our internal rate of return is. So we see we're getting a pretty low internal rate of return, right? Let's let's park this definition up here somewhere, make it a little bit smaller, and I'll make it also maybe like a I don't know. Let's make it like a like a gray. All right. Okay. So now let's visualize this just a little bit and and think through what the um, what's going on here. Okay. What I've what I've done down here at the bottom is um, taken and said, okay, well let's let's look at this. If we think about in every period, in this period we're trying to say, well we've invested 200. So this is kind of like the 200 is the hurdle, our investment that we're trying to win back. So every period we want to see how much closer we're getting to uh, to our our hurdle, right? Our 200. This is where we we come up for air and we and we're not drowning uh, anymore. All right. Uh, actually, one second. I, I need to pull this over here because I need to unhide um, all the rest of this over there. Okay, and now I will put this back just like that. Okay, sorry for the for this uh, little things here. So our cumulative cash flow. Cumulative means we're, we're taking the sum of all these. So see, I get at the bottom here of my screen 43.4 and you can watch that little it's going to grow and grow and it's always going to equal here all I've done is taken the the sum of of these these cash flows my present value and these are based on my 10% right and that's why this says 10% over here I can look and see well how how much closer and closer I'm getting right over time to to coming up up for air right so this is my this is my watermark right and I'm still underwater here as you can see in 10 years I'm still underwater I'm, I'm gonna drown uh, in this project but what we can also do is look at this and say okay well how would it be if I was making 5% uh, was my cost of capital or if I was making 15% was my cost of capital or we could look at 10% and we could go up here and change the cash flows and say well maybe we think we can drive down expenses or we can get a little bit more in sales. You know what would be uh, you know these different scenarios? Well, in these scenarios, I'm just going to look at the the differences in the cost of capital just to illustrate how this impacts our uh, ability to um, to to do what I'm saying, come up for come up for air. So let's let's look at over say 20 periods, right? And I just have some built-in little um, extras up here you can customize your 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 toolbar so you don't have to flip through up here and I'm just gonna do a quick little chart all right over here and I, I'll, I'll just drop it right there let's change this one this is our watermark so let's make it look like water uh, we're just going to go down and maybe pick this guy the area okay so now you can see pretty clearly that we are underwater uh, when we're under this 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 line right and let's let's make this guy here um, you know something like a like a white maybe uh, shape white uh, it doesn't matter okay anyway so so what you see here is the 
you know, this this is our, our two hundred dollars that we're trying to re return back. And you see here, this is our if we had a, a discount rate of five percent or a cost of capital of five percent, here's the cost of capital of ten percent, and here's the cost of capital of fifteen percent. Okay. So let's let, let's think about this. Um, we can go up here, let's get let's get like a little line here that we can we can and we'll put this in a color that that will help us uh, to to better see it, and maybe that would be like a, this orange, right? Let's make it really fat uh, so that we can see. Okay, so if we were to look in year two, right? We're always uh, underwater. Doesn't matter because twenty five dollars uh, discounted is, is not going to cross the threshold. But as we look over time, look at the difference between each of these. It, it grows larger and larger. And what's interesting is to note that where do we actually, you know, make our money back, right? So if we if we look at this from where do we actually get our money back out of this project, it's going to be uh, somewhere in a discounted basis, you know, around period 10. But here, now, I, I just added I just paused the video for a second to add something. I just add the face value of cash flow. So before we discount, right, you would see that just the face value of this will break even somewhere around, you know, uh, the um, eight-year time frame. But if you were to go to management and tell them that that's your, your payback period, right, and that's what we would call that is, our, is your payback period, we'll discuss in another video, uh, you'd be lying because you actually have this time period from there until here that you will not be making uh, any money, right? So, uh, or, or not that you will not be making money. You make money, but you're still not recovering the cost of your investment. So from this point forward, assuming our, um, you know, our 10% uh, cost, you know, cumulative cash flow, we're still underwater. If we had a 5% cost of capital, we would break even. But what you would have to realize is that it's going to be after 17 years. Around 17 years is what we're seeing um, for, for the time period that you're going to take to recover your investment of $200 based on an annual cash flow of $25 and a discount rate of 10%. So hopefully that helps you visualize it a little bit. We'll use this again uh, next time to, to illustrate the internal rate of return.